And like, um, yeah, obviously there's literally two more questions. I don't want to keep you here all day. But um, yeah, obviously I wanted to talk about uh, your time abroad. Obviously I watched your interview with uh, David Hawk on, uh, Horncastle uh, on, the, on the podcast. And um, yeah, obviously we're seeing a lot of English players like, doing bits abroad now. I'm looking at Sancho. What, yeah. what game was he playing for Dortmund? Mate? He was just... I mean, no. it was unreal, unreal. Yeah, like he got a goal and an assist. I mean, the skills that were coming out too, it's just like complete madness. Obviously, Lukman doing bits at RB Leipzig as well. Mm. And um, why do you think like English players now are starting to look abroad now? Is it because maybe it's harder to get a chance in the Premier League? It's tough. It's tough in the Premier League. Mm. Certainly, multi-million pound game there's a lot of money to, to yeah clubs and from a business perspective is it's it's a big gamble regardless mm -hmm. so i think it's always been the fact of oh you don't have enough experience yeah that's, and that's what that used to be the worst thing that i ever heard you know when someone said oh, you don't have enough experience yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've had 50 loans, like, let me play a bit. Yeah. <laughs> How, do I get How do I get experience? Yeah. You don't have the experience. Yeah. You're young, you don't have the experience. So, mm -hmm. so I think now I think a lot of players are realising, for me to get the experience, mm -hmm. I need to play. And if the opportunity is for you to go to Holland, for you to go to Germany, to mm -hmm. Spain. Panzo to France. Yeah, to yeah. France. To play games. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for you to showcase your talent. Mm -hmm. And when you do this, don't get me wrong, teams here and there are scouts who are abroad, mm. they're always going to be looking. Oh, yeah. wait, he's English. Mm. When you come back, the problem is you're always already going to fill into a club as a homegrown player regardless anyway. So, on a, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a thing where a lot of players before maybe I mean I speak for myself a lot of players sometimes might come across as you know a little bit scared you know the culture of leaving home and, yeah. and going abroad and trying to learn a new language or yeah. trying to even be around different people and you know it's a bit intimidating sometimes and I think you, you mm. want to be in your comfort zone and your comfort zone is being in England you know the English football you know how it is you know the style yeah um, I think now you're seeing all these players and people just breaking away from it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think a lot more players are gonna go abroad. Yeah, opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. And if you if you look at as well, like the talent that we have here, in comparison to no disrespect to the other leagues, obviously mm -hmm. some of our players will go in there and slot in. And if you have that that opportunity, is something that you should just take and grab it with both hands. Yeah. That's a hundred percent, hundred percent, and like everything we're saying too. This is why I feel even more confident about the national team in the future because, like, all the young players are taking their careers proper serious now. They do want that game time, and they know they're good enough to to get that game time as well. So it's going to be exciting, obviously, in the future for the national team. But you know what? Um, obviously, your time at Napoli. Uh, you obviously been talking about youth and stuff. You know, with Sari, do you feel confident that maybe youth could get looked at a tiny bit more? Do you think that he'll have his eye on them a bit more, that to see who's coming up? Or uh, do you think they'll even get some chances under him? Uh, I, I don't know. Is is he? Has he? Is he definitely the Chelsea manager now? I think. Yeah, I think it's basically it now because he was at the. Yeah, he was spotted outside the stadium. A photo was taken in that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I've heard rumours of it, but I didn't realise it was it was happening there. And then, yeah. but yeah, it's, it, it, it's a hard one because the system in Italy is, is a lot. You know, we used to have eleven players on the bench. Mm. Uh, with the eleven players on the bench, you could only bring on three. Yeah. So uh, it's a it's a difficult one because he's he's a very intelligent manager. He's a very very good manager. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm intrigued to see what he's going to be like yeah. in the Premier League because the Italian League is like a game of chess. Mm -hmm. 
you make your moves, we make our moves, mm-hmm. whoever's got the better moves wins the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, that sounds a bit cliche, but <laughs> <laughs> but the game of yeah. when I think the game of this is more we're gonna some one team is gonna park up and the other team is gonna try and break them down. Yeah, but if you're heading up to I want to say Stoke now. Unfortunately, they're in the championship. But <laughs> yeah, good riddance. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. Stoke He's got to be professional. <laughs> yeah, I've got to be professional. Yeah. Stoke, no disrespect to Stoke. But yeah. Stoke, my, they're going to throw something different at you. If you mm. play against Palace, they're going to throw something different at you. Yeah. So the the English league is it's a lot more exciting. It's a lot more physical. It's a lot more. Mm. It's, it's a lot quicker, so you know I'd be interesting to see how how the gaffer does because he he like I said he is very intelligent and in that sense I think if if he's if he feels like he's got good enough talent talented youngsters I don't see why he wouldn't play them. Yeah, yeah, because you I'm, know yeah. He's definitely scored now. You've got Zielinski, He's only twenty three. Mm. Played a few games this year. Um, Diara, they got him. Dara, they got from yeah. Bologna. Sick guy, yeah. He played Rog, a few games, yeah. yeah. Rog, Croatian guy, he got played a few games. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, if he, if he's having the players, I don't see why he won't play them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, you're right, you're right. And honestly, I'm just looking forward to Sari Paul. Like, uh, it's been so fun <laughs> doing all this research, looking into him. And like, Sari is kind of like an inspirational figure. Like, imagine that guy, a banker, like, literally his passion for the game love for the game all those years in non in you know in non-league football managing literally work from literally the bottom to get where he is i think it's such an inspiring story it's just like yeah. i don't know that's, i'm just, yeah i'm just really happy for him and i'm i'm happy that he's going to be the new chelsea manager too i mean if he goes well yeah if he it looks like he's going to be a chelsea manager. yeah it's great for him because i I had a conversation with him when I went over to, to Naples and he did mm-hmm. say he did say he'd love to work in England. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. a few years later. A few years later. Yeah, probably, exactly. Probably missing <laughs> gonna be in the Chelsea manager. So For real. you know, you can only you can dream and mm-hmm. you know, it's a dream, yeah. an example. He worked he worked it, didn't he, as a banker? Yeah, he did, yeah, and he he was working all across Europe, like in Germany, Luxembourg. He was in England for a time too, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm curious. Obviously, the training sessions because that seems really exciting. Do you feel like uh, it was like really beneficial to your career, like in for terms me, of everything you learnt in training? For me, yeah, mm. because I, you know, I've been taught technically. The tactical side of things has always been on the board, yeah, a little bit on the pitch, but you know, because like I said, the different scenarios that you're facing as a youngster, sometimes you're naive to it, yeah. And uh, and I think for me, when I went out to Napoli, it was mm-hmm. it was in between that period of not really playing many games. Mm-hmm. It was like having uh, lessons. In school, basically, yeah. mm-hmm. um, I took the like. There was a lot of shadowing, you know, like shadow this person, follow this person, yeah. see, see what kind of movements to do, what patterns it is, and everything. Yeah. And, and um, defensively, for me, it was when I went to play. Um, I'd been there a few months, and then we went away to England. And um, I remember sitting down with Steve Holland and mm-hmm. and and Gareth and. Uh, we were just talking about tactical stuff because they knew I was in Italy and yeah. predominantly most of my training sessions were very tactical. And mm-hmm. I'd just gone up another level in terms of my tactical awareness of the game. So that just went, you know, sky high. Mm-hmm. But I'd never really... I think in, in England you go... You go through the motions quite a lot, and sometimes you don't really have time to think about certain things in games. It's so quick, in it, yeah. So quick, but in Italy it was more. It was a lot slower, and mm. had to. If you were away from a press a second, the ball gets played around the corner. Yeah. But I think with that, if you added that to English football or in the English game, mm. with the likes of Manchester City, for example, what what they did last year, 
they were very, very hard to play against. Mm -hmm. And you can see that they're good on the ball, obviously, don't get me wrong, world-class players, but off the ball, they're, they're hounding teams down. Yeah. And, and I think that was something for me that I, I learned when I was out there, and it was down to, down to the manager. Mm -hmm. He basically just said, right, this is where I want you to be. Mm. When it's played here, this is uh, how I want you to go, and this is where I want you to go. Yeah. So in that sense, I think if he is going to be the Chelsea manager, then. Mm. Well, I don't want to talk too much because I'm not <laughs> a Chelsea player anymore, and I do think what. Yeah. I'm. I'm just. You know. I'm intrigued to to see how he does because he is a very intelligent man. Mm. So, so we can expect to see you at Stamford Bridge a few more times in next season. Oh, this season, <laughs> oh, my brother's gone on loan now, so ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'll probably just watch the games on telly for now and then yeah. build up a confidence again to actually go to Stamford Bridge, yeah, exactly. But you know, obviously, listening to that podcast you did, it was really interesting hearing you talk about uh, Georginia. Obviously, you were saying, like, um, you know, for people listening who you know, obviously, watch it, listen to the podcast if you can't be bothered, obviously. He was talking about that, you know, no one really knows who Jorginho is. Uh, yeah. I've never seen a player that can literally one touch, two touch every training session. It looks like, uh, you know, he'll be a Chelsea player. Like, what kind of insights can you give in regards to Jorginho? Like, can he even speak English? Like, even a tiny bit? <laughs> <laughs> Get some inside info here now. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to ask... I'm gonna stitch him up here, Anna. Uh, how are you, my friend? You know, <laughs> I tell you what, it's decent. Yeah. For starters, you know, it's it's a uh, it's Definitely a tough. will teach him. Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. he's luckily for him, there's a lot of Brazilian guys in the changing room. He speaks Italian. Yeah. His English isn't the greatest, but mm. you know, he, he's an intelligent guy. So I'm guessing he'll he, he will learn quite quickly. But uh, he, he's a great guy. He's a, he's, a, he's a bubbly person. He's always happy. Yeah. See, he enjoys his football. I I, I follow him on my Instagram, and mm. he's they doing kickups with his mum. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a joke, obviously. Like the ball away for a minute and just relax. But he, <laughs> he, just, he just he loves football. He loves life, and and uh, and I mean, if he is going to be a Chelsea player, then. I think you guys should hopefully expect some good things. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, that type of... I haven't really had that profile with Phil player. Obviously, we've got that in Sesk, but then obviously, you know, it doesn't really get used in that role. It gets used in a different role in that. But um, yeah, I mean, it, that, that's going to be in, the interesting thing, obviously, with Sari. Because the thing is, there's still a lot of fans that kind of doubt his credentials. And of course, it comes down to things that I don't think are really fair. Because I think you just forget the context. And it's just like, in 2018, no one cares about context no more. But it's just like, fans are like, oh, he's never won a trophy. Uh, why are we signing a guy like this? Now, obviously, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to ask you to like, direct your question to those types of fans. But like, uh, how would you maybe encourage them to see things a bit differently in regards to Sari? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> I, I mean, that was, that was proper confusing, innit? That was. Yeah, was I mean, I think, I think what the interesting thing for me is, as as a player now, do you, when you look at managers, are you looking at how they play? Are you looking at their style of football? Are you looking at like their CV? Like he's got yeah. five scudettos? Or are you looking at you know this guy plays attacking football? He's going to use me as a number six. Like, do you look at that, or are you looking at like the guy's kind of CV when you're sort of looking at managing stuff these days? I think for me it's probably. I think it, it changes with different managers, you know. Yeah. You can, you know, the likes of, for example, I'll just give Mourinho. Yeah. If Mourinho was to go to a club, you'd be thinking, wow, he's won. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's something that obviously comes to mind straight away. But in terms of Sarri, uh, I think everyone's seen the way Napoli played football last year. Mm. And, the, and I think immediately the the exciting thing for a player should be, wow, I hope we're playing mm -hmm. amateur football this year because the way Napoli were playing was amazing. Yeah. So, in that sense, I don't think you look at his credentials in terms of what trophies he's won, what he hasn't won. You just mm -hmm. 
focus on how is he going to improve me as a player. Yeah. And are we going to be playing really exciting stuff? You know, you'd be interested to see, you'd be intrigued to see what sort of things he's going to bring. Mm. Yeah. Oh, he's won six Scudettos or he's done that and he's done this. Yeah. That's what I think anyway, but I mean, I don't know, for the fans, they, they, ha they have to have a different perspective because it is yeah. all about... It is all about them winning trophies. And black and white. Yeah, very black and white, 100%. And, um, and yeah, obviously, you know, with uh, Sari, obviously, under Conte, he's a very different system. Do you think that... Did, did it take you a while to get used to how to play in the system? Uh, it took me a while because it was a whole different experience for me. Mm. I couldn't speak a word of Italian, so that yeah. was definitely ready. Mm -hmm. So he was explaining things tactically. I was just sat there. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's just everything really is getting used to to the heat. When I went out there, it was boiling hot, and we had to train like mid after like three, four o'clock, just yeah. to let things cool down. I wasn't used to that, and there were, there were so many factors, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Um, it, it was just, it, it was always going to take me a while to settle in because, mm. like I said, I'm not in my comfort zone. Yeah. And I was in a different country with different players and yeah, different with a different style. So, you know, it was always it was always going to take me a while to get used to it, but. Mm. I felt like I did adapt quickly, but it took me a while because of the language barrier. Yeah. And I played the biggest part as I couldn't communicate with everyone too well. And yeah. you know, at times it took me ages to get to process all the things that he was saying. I could only pick up a few words. And yeah. after a few months, I'd seen how the team was playing. It was like every week, every week, every week. I then started looking at things and thinking, oh, right, okay, so this player goes here, this person moves here. Yeah. It was. It was a lot more fluid for me, so mm -hmm. it's fortunate that I couldn't get as many games as I wanted. But, mm -hmm. but albeit, at the end of the day, I I learned a lot, so it was always a positive experience for me. Oh, calm, calm. Obviously, it's getting me even more excited for Sorry Ball <laughs> for this for next season. And um, yeah, I mean, Joe, you got any other question that you want to like? Uh, you know, obviously, ask Nate. Yeah, like last one for me. I mean, you you obviously know a lot of the the kind of. The Chelsea guys are sort of in their early twenties now. Ruben and other guys like that. Do do you see them like fitting into kind of the style of football that he's going to play? I'm maybe looking at like Ruben in that kind of left central midfield role that Sorry plays. Maybe some other younger players fitting in. Do you think like stylistically that these guys are, might might fit into what he's trying to do? I'm just thinking they they've come through. They're they're very technical. They're obviously really good on the ball and stuff. So, well, I don't I don't really know because yeah. I worked with Sorry two years ago. So yeah, he could come in and take the whole thing. And I yeah. have no yeah. idea. You know, it's at the end of the day, I can't, I can't really. I can only speak on my behalf and my experience that I've had with him, and and uh, for me, I learned a lot off him. So yeah, if he is going to be the Chelsea manager, then I can only think the players that are there have to try and understand what he wants from them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. it's not it's not a thing where I can say you have to play a certain way, you have to do things a certain way because mm -hmm. he could have changed within the last two years that I worked with him. So yeah. personally, it's it's not really something that I can answer that one. But yeah. mm -hmm. I do think it's it's down to adapting to a new manager as quickly as you can yeah. because yeah. he's obviously going to display his messages, how he wants to play, what he wants to do, and so on and yeah. so forth. I think that's the key word, really, just the, the ad adaptation for the players. Though. Yeah. Mm. 